Hey, good evening, everybody, and welcome to another show on the Comic Art Live channel, episode 210, believe it or not. Man, it's crazy. But uh, tonight, we've got a Heritage Auctions preview, and this is for the International Signature Auction uh, that is uh, happening very soon. And uh, we've got a treat tonight, because Olivia is going to be joining us along with Joe. So uh, let me bring them into the uh, stream, and we can all get to talking. Welcome to the show. Nice thank to have you, thank you here again. Thank you for the opportunity. Olivia, what time is it where you're at? I know it's late. It's uh, 1 a.m. <laughs> All right. Well, we won't keep you up past uh, 2.30 a.m. I can promise you that. But um, but are you are you home? I remember you were on the road the last time we, we had you on the show. No, actually, I'm in uh, my hotel room there in Paris. Um, we are uh, present at uh, the gallery of uh, Bernard Maé where we are presenting 55 originals, uh, mostly the platinum section mm -hmm. um, that we have in the international sales. Um, so we have a lot of people visiting us and asking some questions about the originals, HAA. And yeah, quite a busy time, always. <laughs> does, it, does it feel busier than usual or, or, or just like, you know, what you would expect for a auction of this uh caliber well as usual and uh, this time we, we will uh, see we have a few um, gems uh, from the franco-belgian uh, uh, um, market market so yeah and it's the, the first time that we have uh, that quality in our uh, auction so yeah um, there are a lot of interested people uh, coming to the gallery well that's uh that's exciting i mean so the when you're doing the preview, do you have uh, you know several staff on hand to kind of do the walkthroughs, or do you kind of are you are you this, the only uh, the representative for for Heritage to do those sorts of things? Well, this week this week I'm I'm alone, uh, but we I'm I'm with the staff of uh, of Bernard Maé, so they are uh, they are there as well with uh, some experts like Bernard. So mm -hmm. he's also um, someone uh, always very happy to uh, to come in to help. When, when there's an opening in uh, Paris of any gallery show, and Bernard has one of the most uh, you know, prestigious galleries in, in mm -hmm. Paris, so he's very gracious in letting us uh, use the gallery for our preview. Uh, but, you know, sometimes Bernard will bring out champagne. He'll invite all of the artists. He brings out uh, uh, appetizers. There's a line out on the street. I mean, people. This is this is a, a, a thing in Paris. Well, you even you know, in, in other <laughs> cities where people go to previews, they drink, they socialize. It's uh, it's it's an event. Uh, it harkens back to when we had you know live auctions, and I mean, it was a major event with the preview parties the night before and everything else. But Olivier, he he's the guy that brings everything from. Uh, uh, you know, Belgium, his office is uh, in Brussels and uh, he he brings everything out and, and then they f they frame it. They put it up on the wall. I mean, it's it's a big undertaking to to basically uh, expose fans to the material. Yeah, yesterday was quite busy. Yesterday was the uh, building of the um, of the exhibit and uh, was helped by uh, Lisiane and uh, Lucia, two, two of my uh, team uh, members. And um, yeah, so that was uh, quite he a has a separate team that works in Europe, which is HAE, HA Europe, as opposed to Dallas. So uh, mm -hmm. um, yeah, he's got a very nice office in, uh, you know, in Brussels. And okay. you are all welcome in Brussels. If you are around, you just yeah. Give a call, and uh, I will be very happy to show you around. Yeah, I uh, I, I appreciate that. I'm going. To, I'm going to try to take you up on that sometime soon. Please, but, you please know, do. I, I think you get. You must have some challenges then, because not having access to all the uh, capabilities in the uh, the Dallas location. I mean, you you have to have uh, different ways of getting the art photographed and prepped for the show, I assume. I mean, because there they have everything set up. I assume you don't have that same similar kind of setup to get everything ready and prepped for the auction in Brussels. 
we don't have the same setup, but uh, we are uh, defending ourselves and uh, <laughs> with the help of uh, Joe and Nadia as well. Um, mm -hmm. Well, we we are giving our best to uh, to give the best on the market in the international sales. Yes. Olivier had to do his own photography in the beginning because <laughs> they weren't set up in uh, Utrecht, where our other the, the main office is, mm -hmm. uh, to do flat art the way we have it and. And then he has to do the cataloging and the translation. And uh, in addition to going and getting material in numerous other countries, I mean, he just got back from Dubai. He went to that Dubai show. Mm -hmm. That was an experience, right, uh, Olivier? Absolutely, and a crazy market. Uh, I was astonished by the uh, welcome, uh, welcoming by, by, by the people there. They are completely fan of uh, comics, uh, trading cards, video games. Amazing, amazing uh, side of the world. So a lot to do there. Yes, absolutely. And we just opened a new office in Japan, and uh, we're ex we're expanding. Um, we hope to even be expanding into manga, the actual books, as opposed to the art. And mm -hmm. uh, so things are happening. We just announced today that we're going to have. Uh, uh, monthly uh, toy sales, and uh, so I mean the market is is growing. Well, you know, before we begin, can I uh, can I say uh, one thing? I uh, I would like to recognize um, for those in in the audience that knew Ed Jaster. Um, you know, I knew Ed going back to the '80s, so basically uh, almost 40 years. And uh, uh, yeah, I was, you know, I was there when he started with Heritage and everything else. And you know, Ed is responsible in a very large way for the success of the Heritage comic book uh, and comic art initiative. Uh, it was 23 years. Uh, sadly, he passed away uh, a little over a week ago, and uh, uh, there will be a. Uh, funeral and a ceremony held on March 9th. Anybody interested can, you know, get in touch with me. I could give you details, but uh, I would be remiss if we didn't, um, you know, yeah, we, uh, mention. I, I, exactly. I've only, I only got the chance to meet Ted a few times, but, um, but his reputation preceded him as being somebody who was, uh, who took a lot of joy in his work, loved the, uh, loved collectibles of, of, all kinds and was somebody who was uh resoundly you know respected in in the uh in the business and i think that you know that says a lot uh, about about him and i uh i wish i had the opportunity to talk with him more i mean you know, now that uh you know things have gone the way they have but but no i mean i think there were a lot of really nice things said about it from other from his from his co-workers to uh, to other people who got to interact with him as consigners and uh you know as buyers of a uh, lot you know of any of things through heritage too so yeah, he definitely left a very, uh, you know, his legacy is is in, you know, is sound. I mean, that's that's yeah. what's wonderful. Oh, he also launched the illustration art department, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and and that led to the American art department, and because comics and comic art was the first uh, category after coins. Uh, I think it was coins, posters, comic art, and that's that's it. And comic art is the second largest uh, division to coins. So, you know, that's saying a lot for a $1.7 billion company. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Um, yeah, no, well, it's, uh, it's I, I, again, I, you know, I, I, I think, uh, I think I'm sure Heritage, you know, feels that loss, you know, in a, in a, in a very measurable way. But, um, yeah, we, we definitely, uh, uh, our condolences go out to his family and everyone who, who got, who knew him and was friends with him. Um, so with regards to the, uh, the international auction, I mean, I got the spreadsheet from you guys and I hadn't looked at it until I got to go through the spreadsheet and, uh, did that and then, and look through, um, several of the, the, you know, the lots that weren't in there. And it's a, it's a very solid auction. I mean, it's, it's impressive. Um, both for the uh, uh, both the European artworks that are there and the um, the more you know American uh, U.S. based artworks, and so that 
I, you know, I assume these, you know, Joe, you always talk about the signature auctions always kind of, uh, you know, they kind of happen and even leading right up to the point where you have to commit to the catalog. Is that the same way for you, Olivier? I mean, do you, are you really getting everything in last minute or is this something that you were able to kind of plan out for that where it wasn't, uh, you know, kind of, a, you know, running right to the last second to the cutoff date? Well, this one was a little bit tough to, uh, to build because um we have two uh, during the year uh, one in march and one in october and the one in october is actually because we always see the auction uh, uh, during the auction time but there is the after auction there there, there is the finals there is the the, the, the shipping everything mm -hmm. happening and actually, uh, this one was built from November till mid uh, January. So, um, yeah, that, that's also the reason why uh, we don't have uh, anime, and we don't, we will not have anime for twenty four. We are joining force with uh, the Dallas team of uh, Jim Lance, uh, regrouping everything. Um, so this one was a little bit tough to, uh, to, to build, especially to get uh, quality originals. And I always uh, kind of tend to avoid last minutes um, because last minutes with a short team is always uh, a hassle to, to, to handle. And uh, yeah, <laughs> and especially end of uh, December, early January, you also have um, the holiday uh, of uh, uh, December, Christmas time and everything happening there. So, yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah, you've, uh, it is a tough time of year to pull something like that together. But absolutely. This said, the months of March uh, is always one of the best periods uh, for an auction uh and especially in europe uh, because there are no uh, competitors when at the end of the year uh october november are always always very crowded uh um, with many many auctions happening and also a lot of conventions like new york comic con uh, luca comic con uh there is a, a con in edinburgh i believe at that time as well so there is a lot happening uh, during that uh, period of uh, of the year. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's just it anymore. There's uh, there's no no great time to do anything. You know, where you're not in conflict <laughs> yeah. with something else, right? It just seems that way. Whether yeah. it's shows or auctions or uh, you know gallery openings, there's there's just so much to do in our in our hobby now. It really has exploded, and um, after the pandemic, it's just been it's been pretty marvelous to just see how. How, how many opportunities there are out for there as as collectors just to either participate or view uh Absolutely. Like yours or just you know like we were talking about the marvel exhibit earlier just there's so much out there today that's promoting um th this art form that you know we've all loved for years and years and years and i think finally people are catching on to how how special it is so yeah i uh you know i'm excited about it like i say i i um uh, this has been like the best uh, couple of years of my time and my life in the hobby here, you know, as far as uh, just being able to enjoy it in so many different ways. Yeah. But um, yeah. So um, would you like to like dive into some of the pieces? And we, and we yeah, talk absolutely. About start absolutely. off by saying that the auction actually begins March 9th, 11 a.m. Mm -hmm. Central Time. That's session one. And he has a second session, March 10th. That begins 9 a.m. Central. So for Nine. people uh, following in, in Europe, that's uh, 6 p.m. on the Saturday and 4 uh, p.m. on the Sunday. Now, is that normal for them to start in the evening like that? I mean, I guess you, you kind of have to put it at a good point. So it. Uh, well, you know, at the time when when we started this auction, it was around uh, four uh, in the afternoon. Uh, so mostly, most of the people, and, and especially on the Friday, because we had uh, two um, live auctions uh, at the time, on the Friday on the, and on the Saturday, and 4 p.m. Uh, in the afternoon on the Friday, most of the people were in their cars uh, coming back home. Uh, so we moved a little bit uh, at uh, the end of the day uh, for people in Europe, 
and in America at the time it was 9 uh, a.m. if I'm not wrong and and now we we moved uh, by two two hours leaving uh, the clients in America uh, giving them more opportunity yeah, yeah oh, more opportunity it's 11 so that's uh, that's easier for them to 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 be online as well and um, I know that in America we have uh, the habit to do that during the week um most of the time in europe we we have the habit to do that during the weekend um, so yeah you you respect the uh the work week and then the weekends are yeah i'm trying i'm trying believe me it's always um, um i'm trying to find um some kind of mix to uh please everyone which is not always very uh easy but yeah since um, even uh, if people see that catalog as a European one, uh, it's under HA.com and I'm part of HA, uh, HA team in, in Dallas as well. So, yeah, I'm trying to find the best way to uh, regroup uh, America and Europe and, um, and to find a balance for everyone. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's exciting. So, well, so everybody should be ready to be tuned in this weekend then to uh, to see how the auction goes and participate. Absolutely. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Do you, uh, I assume you man the, uh, you know, you're there during the uh, the live auction. I mean, what, what what's your role during during the actual auction? Do you, uh, I say, uh, like Joe says, I uh, said, sorry, uh, I'm just serving the champagne and, and the cookies and everything. So I'm just there for that. <laughs> Uh, all right, so you, so you don't man the phones, you don't have, have to worry about well, any of that. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm doing that on, on the top. <laughs> yeah, the, everything concerning the auction as far as the administration and, and everything is in Dallas. Right. So we don't have the live auctioneer in, uh, in, in Yeah, Dallas. no, I get it, I get it. That's, uh, uh, I was more joking, but um, but yeah, I get and, it. That's and fun, we, we will have the, the luck to have uh, Mike uh, Sadler and Emily uh mm -hmm. as auctioneer so i'm sure that uh they, they they'll do a, a great job and uh, mike is always someone very passionate about uh, what he's doing so and uh yeah i'm i'm very uh, happy uh, uh, about that yeah well, wonderful well let's uh let's look at some artwork because we've got uh, we've got a few very uh, interesting pieces to show off and we're starting starting off with some uh you know the most uh, most well-read character on the planet, right? I mean, with regards to Asterix. So it's uh, uh, this one's already at uh, fifty-two and a half thousand dollars. So let me uh, let me click on the artwork here so we can see it better. Yes, we we had um, another one in the last auction, uh, which did I believe between ninety and one hundred k, no, uh, around one hundred k. And this one is, um, I really like that one. It's from the uh, 20th um, album of Asterix. It's um, for many uh, considerate of one of the best uh, album. Asterix is uh, traveling in Corsica. Um, and uh, I really like uh, what uh, Uderzo did uh, in this story making some parallels between um, uh, the history there in Corsica and Napoleon Bonaparte. Uh, as you can see, the, the, the uh, character speaking with um, Obelix and Asterix is a um, uh, Corsican chief um, and is holding, holding uh, Idefix, so the dock on his arm. If you can move a little bit up. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that uh, panel. So the the third one, and he's holding um, Idefix, uh, the doc, uh, with his hands like uh, Napoleon uh, had the habit to do. So you see, like this. So and and Napoleon was also uh, a Corsican. Um, so um, if you go lower in the lowest panel. Um, it's also very unusual to have uh, a huge panel like that one. Uh, most most of the pages of uh, ESO are always in, in small panels. And uh, there is a, a link uh, in that panel um, 
between the Battle of uh, Austerlitz, uh, um, the Battle of the Three Emperors uh, in 1805, and that one, and that's what uh, the chief uh, is saying in the last uh, panel. Uh, C'est qu'il est célèbre chez nous le, le Sommet d'Austerlitz. Um, there was a, a quote said by uh, Napoleon about the sun uh, rising uh, in Austerlitz, seen as a divine, uh, uh, divine um, sign. Um, yeah. Uh, about uh, about Napoleon, in fact, and and the fact that it was he, he was sorry protected by by God. So that page is uh, very special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's worth mentioning. Uh, and we've said this before, but you know, Asterix and Obelix. The uh, like when this book came out, they'll sell over a million copies in two or three days. Uh, over 385 million copies of Asterix have been sold worldwide. Uh, and it's been adapted into 15 motion pictures, uh, 10 animated, five live action. It has a, uh, its own theme park. I mean, it's like, it's like, you know, Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck in, in, in Europe. It's immensely popular, uh, uh, and because it was so popular, because of the laws that govern publication rights and artists, the artists, when they put out a publication like this, they get wealthy almost immediately. And that's why they don't have any need to sell. So the only, uh, it's, it's almost like a Watterson that the only ones that really are on the market were given, uh, you know, as gifts to friends. So the, the artwork is, is rare, and that's why it's so expensive. And this one has also um, panels uh, with uh, Obelix and the wild boar uh, and is under his arm. It's a breakfast, in fact. <laughs> and a ni very, very nice panel of uh, Asterix. Yeah. Uh, so everything um, everything you want you, 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 you want is indeed in, in, in that page with yeah. also for that page the historical um, uh, parallel uh, with uh, Napoleon Bonaparte. Now is there a reason why they you know typically within these stories they don't have splash pages or half splash pages is it just part of the you know the need for the, for more uh, you know the narrative just fits well in smaller panels and uh, well, that was to... not very an habit. Uh, that's that's more a, a U.S. habit than a, mm -hmm. um, than a European one. Um, and and um, you have differences, uh, of course, between uh, artists in in Europe uh, using larger panels and 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 smaller ones, and and that's the reason why I I, I, I pinpoint uh, the the fact that uh, on this one. Uh, it's let's say have a splash uh, if you want uh, because of the the large panel in in the lower part so that's not very uh, common in uh, Uderzo uh, work yeah plus 1973 even in America they weren't doing many you know you know multiple splash pages in in comics at that point right and right. these were all graphic novels so I mean they were first either serialized in magazines you know Belot magazine or or uh, like that and then turned into a graphic novel or published to be a graphic novel so it's different it's actual reading material and you know mm -hmm. substantial you know well it's absolutely beautiful so, you can't go by any any happy. store or kiosk or anywhere in europe and not see uh you know asterisk still on the newsstand right. everywhere you know yeah Let's see here. So uh, switching to uh, now, this is you know I, I've seen the uh, the strip before. I've never seen any in person though, unfortunately. But th these are fun. I've always I really have always enjoyed the uh, Andre style. Mm -hmm. Well, we um, Joe Joe mentioned that uh, the Uderzo pages were uh, not very easy to get. Um, believe me, Andre Franquin pages are even tougher uh, to to get and uh, i'm very proud about uh, this one 
uh, it's the first time that Heritage has such a gem uh, in uh, an auction. Um, it's a uh, Gaston page. Um, so uh, Gaston was the creation of uh, André Franquin. André Franquin is probably for a lot of people uh, the number one in Franco-Belge universe, even before uh, Hergé, uh, which is my case. <laughs> Um, so I'm not very neutral uh, there, um, uh, and um, you have good pages of Gaston and um, amazing pages from uh, from uh, very rare uh, um, uh, amazing pages from uh, Gaston, and this is one of them. Um, Gaston is uh, some kind of. Um, clumsy, lazy uh, guy working uh, in, in, uh, uh, in an editor uh, uh, office. Um, and he is the one doing all the crazy stuff, uh, mostly sabotage uh, all the contracts of the, the management. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, he's known for that. He's known uh, also as an inventor, a music uh, instrument. He's known to drive uh, an old uh, fi uh, Fiat uh, 509 uh, in the lower uh, two panels. And uh, in fact, uh, Gaston was used at the time by André Franquin uh, to, how can I say, uh, relay um, some of his uh, political uh, point of view. Uh, Franquin was an ecologist, uh, he was a pacifist. Um, and uh, on this page, uh, this page is very special because it was drawn uh, a few months after uh, the sinking of the Amoco Cadiz uh, on the uh, coast uh, of France, which is the worst ecological uh, catastrophe uh, in time. And um, on this page, you see on uh, the top uh, panels, uh, most of the team of the uh, publishing house where is working uh around the television um which was at the time the social media they, they had nothing we we had nothing else at the time uh watching um uh, politic uh, people promising a lot of uh, things uh, that they never uh, kept and still never keep and then um uh, the seagull, uh, the seagull um, is uh, one of uh, Gaston's uh, friends. In fact, uh, Gaston in uh, all these stories are always with either the seagull or either uh, his cat, César. And the seagull is watching uh, another one completely in glued uh, under uh, petrol. Not happy about it and um, uh, normally, the seagull is joining Gaston in his car uh, to travel, to, to go around. And there, uh, the seagull is not very happy of, about uh, what he's uh, seeing. What he see. And, and, and Gaston is trying to, to, to make the point and say, listen, uh, we need fuel. Uh, without that, uh, we cannot uh, run the car. We cannot do anything. So the seagull is very pissed and uh, she's uh, flying uh, above uh, above the car and the uh, punchline at uh, at the end is uh, oh la 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 vie devient uh, difficile à vivre life is become very tough uh, to to live um, so it's um, it's a political message uh, it's save the planet so it's still today and especially today in the world we are living uh, very accurate, um, and uh, that page is one of the most famous. Um, the um, the panel with the seagull under uh, the petrol has been taken in the Idée Noire uh, by Franquin. So watch uh, another book, um, and uh, we have uh, the luck to have uh, the inked page. And the color guide uh, used for um, for um, the publishing, the production, the, 
you. Thank you. And one, yeah, that one. And uh, they are not uh, and colored by uh, by Franquin, so that's uh, that's an amazing combination. And um, I, I really love that one. Um, and if you go back on the original, uh, maybe the third image, not the, the, the first one, the, the third one. Um, He's saying uh, uh, the uh, alternate, uh, one of the alternate. Yes, yeah. that one. Yeah. if you go lower uh, on, at the, the lowest part, uh, Franquin signed um, with, um, yeah, if you can zoom in there, it's very right. special because he didn't do that in uh, a lot of, uh, on a lot of his originals. And so he signed the page Franquin, used his name as a car, polluting uh, a cop, uh, also not very happy about the pollution. So that's another uh, message. And Franquin was also not a huge uh, police uh, police fan or uh, park meters uh, fan. So yeah, it's kind of a private joke inside, uh, inside a page. I love that. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's just amazing. And as I said, you, you have, of course, Hergé, you have Franquin, uh, you have Uderzo and maybe Peyo uh, with the Smurfs, and mm -hmm. you have there um, the top uh, uh, in Franco-Belgian with other ones, of course. Uh, Morris. But, uh, sorry? Morris, Lucky Luke. Yeah, uh, Maurice, Lucky Luke, but Franquin, Franquin was... Uh, was above, uh, yeah. really uh, known about Gaston. Franquin took over uh, also Spirou and Fantasio. Um, so uh, he in, invented- yeah. This a is still of, a very popular television show uh, over absolutely. there. Um, it's used all over. I mean, it's, he's considered uh, like the Walt Kelly of uh, art. I mean, his, his art is very much alive, uh, very active. Uh, you, you could see the uh, it, it the the animation sensibility of it. I mean, it's really uh, uh, beautifully paced, and you know he's one of the revered artists in the uh, in the medium over there. And, and originals are again very rare, so they always they go for a lot. I mean, what's the estimate on this? Do you think? Uh, well, uh, I made in in this catalog. I made. Um, uh, four exceptions uh we we, we have four lots uh on which i um, i've let the estimates under uh under uh, the lots because a lot of people and especially uh fans passionate guys uh in america are not very used to see that kind of original so uh this one is between 90 and 100k okay yeah. So, in, and I, I wrote if if you open the the, the catalog, you you will find the estimate under uh, under uh, the originals. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's an amazing page. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can see that uh, it's still very respectable. I mean, it's you know hitting six figures for for uh, this, this is going to be uh, an interesting piece to watch. I'm I'm very curious. Yes. <laughs> Uh, let's see. I think we switch a little bit here, going over to some uh, American art. What do we got? Kieran Dwyer and Uncanny X Men two sixty two cover. Yeah, I went. Uh, I you know even though um, Olivier gave me a list of what he would like to see, I also used the uh, most popular bid track as well as the highest price. So I tried to alternate it a little bit. So you know we go a little. Perfect. Yeah. So I, I, I leave you uh, this one, Joe. <laughs> <clears throat> well, we don't I mean, see like, any yeah. uh, Kieran we, Dwyer we... Uh, Uncanny X Men covers. This is a good one, 1990. Uh, it uh, they're trapped in the Morlock tunnels, uh, surrounded by menacing tentacles. Uh, Forge is leaning over the fallen banshee as a storm lookalike makes its way through the smoke behind them. So it's a uh, it's. I, I I really like the um, how he sets it all because it's in a, a, a tunnel, you know, 
a cave type tunnel thing. It's a, a black background, really uh, impressive uh, presentation. Yeah, Banshee's always knocked out somewhere. So it's like, uh, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they, they, there's certain characters who, who have been on teams who probably just should have kept their careers uh, solo and maybe they stayed a villain or something. But Banshee's one of them. But uh, but no, this is a <laughs> this is an, an era where we have a lot of collectors. This is their you know, their sweet spot, I think, you know, beginning here. Um, yeah. Well, beginning around issue 200 through uh, the mid 300s is like, you know, that's there's that's an area of, of uh, of wonderment and fascination from our from the collectors who follow the channel and have stuff on calf so you know this is a this is a good piece you know you don't think it's wired too often with uh with with x-men work but um but no this is, this is a good one yeah and rubistine inks uh really did a nice job as well and i was very surprised to find it uh in belgium in fact so <laughs> <laughs> well there, there is a lot of uh us artwork in European hands. Oh, but believe me, yes. Uh, among the biggest <laughs> clients uh, are in in Europe. Um, yeah, yeah. I know it's uh, but but yeah, that's it, the thing is we haven't quite figured out how to get the European art to uh, you know cross the pond and and start getting collected a little bit more over here. That's something that's we should what all I'm, I'm trying to do with the international catalog. Uh, uh, that's the reason why I, I mix a little bit of everything to, to gather the interest, not only from America, but also from Europe. And we have more and more clients now in, in the Middle East and uh, in uh, Asia as well. So, yeah. Let's see. Ah, we have a Jean Girard Mobius uh, garage piece. This one's yeah. really nice. That's um, the Airtight Garage, uh, which it's <clears> one of uh, the most famous uh, story from uh, not Jean Giraud at that time, but Mobius. Uh, so everything he did uh, on sci-fi and uh, and related uh, stories were, were uh, was uh, sorry under uh, his Mobius name, and everything linked on Blueberry. We have a few uh, piece of uh, blueberry was under his Jean Giraud, uh, Jean Giraud name. Yeah, it's amazing that he's the only artist that I can think of that, you know, he, he was very successful doing uh, blueberry, westerns, historical uh, things in a completely different style. And then when he decided he wanted to do science fiction, he wanted to break away completely. And so he changed, he came up with a new pseudonym Moebius and uh, uh, a completely different style with this fine line uh, style. I often say he's he's one of the people that could draw anything. It, it seems you know he, he do it immediately and he's very fast. Um, and in, in, in one line uh, without without removing his pen. In fact, he, he yeah, could yeah, do yeah, something right. with with one line. Uh, and, and I, I completely agree with uh, what Joe just said, and not only uh, his line, but also his imagination. So he could combine both. And, and the airtight garage is also something very special. You have the major fatal or major uh, Grubert, uh, the character on the top uh, panel, who, uh, who creates uh, um, some kind of um, uh, Superimposed world on the asteroids and uh, asteroids, sorry, and is uh, watching uh, the evolution of the world uh, universe he created, uh, and and um, that's completely uh, insane as a story, in fact, and uh, uh, from from that um, airtight garage. Um, uh, came other stories, so it's it was at the time a complete evolution uh, um, in in the world of of comics. Um, so uh, and this page is is uh, very special because um, you have uh, we spoke about Uderzo and and people want to see Asterix and Obelix, and in this page you have the uh, major uh, fatal ma, uh, major uh, Grubert with his uh, colonial hat and the uh, antenna he has uh, on the top. Uh, and um, 
is communicating uh, um, to his uh, ship uh, called the uh, Siguri uh, with with the hat, in fact. So that's completely, uh, yeah, completely crazy. Um, yeah, it's unusual to find. I mean, this is an ideal page. It's his. This is considered his masterpiece. Um, it was um, in the, the European heavy metal, which is you know, uh, Harant there. And uh, the garage is actually an asteroid that uh, is out in the constellation surrounding a, uh, um, orbits, uh, and he orbits the asteroid in his spaceship. So he's the one looking out on, it's almost like the watcher, if you wanna put it into perspective <laughs> with uh, the Marvel universe. And uh, so getting such, you know, uh, iconic shots of him is unusual. This is, uh, uh, a, you know, a real ideal type page. And the top panel uh, was taken uh, for a lithograph, a limited uh, lithograph as well. So, yeah, uh, yeah that would that the, that was turned into a limited edition. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I've never owned uh, anything by him, but I, I hope to one day. Yeah. I'll, I'll take even a little little scribble. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, uh, but no, this is this is really beautiful. Okay. Oh, uh, Marini, um, Marini, and and um, that's from the Rapace uh, story, uh, which tell a story about uh, vampires uh, trying to find their place in the modern world and. Um, this page is, in fact, uh, the most famous page of uh, the complete series. Um, sold many, many years uh, at Sotheby's. Um, and yeah, it's the best page of, of the Rapa story. Uh, I really like Marini is um, a genius when it comes to colors and, and uh, uh, you, you don't have Batman overlooking uh, Gotham City there, but you have the brother and sister uh, trying to find out their way in, in the modern world um, and looking o over uh, the, the city. Uh, Marini is a true legend, not only uh, in, uh, in uh, Europe, but also in America. Uh, so he did um, a great job on the Batman uh, um, uh, Dark Prince, uh, charming story. We, yeah, we, we have, have a we have a page coming up later. Yeah, yeah. We we have the um, the nicest cover, in fact, as well yeah. in, in the story, and and yeah, that page is uh, a legend uh, among the collectors' uh, worlds. Yeah, this this storyline. This is one of his earliest. Yeah, you know, Marini is known for every page is hand colored painted uh, beautiful he does beautiful women and uh, this was one of his earliest series and what he you know made him famous and it's called it's actually called the the it's called raptors just like the dinosaurs but it's uh, about vampires and uh, it's very early it's uh, uh, the vampire Drago and his sister Camilla and uh, they are looking out uh, in the city, they're always looking to uh, uh, seek revenge for the murder of their father. This is one of the best pages in the series. So again, a, a primo page. It's fantastic. The colors are, you know, they're, they're simple, you know, red, red and blue, and, but it works so darn well. I mean, that uh, the middle uh, panel is just phenomenal. It's, it's and, and Rico is well well known for his, especially his blue. Uh, it's um, mm. um, just amazing. Um, I had a, a lot of them uh, in my hands uh, lately, and uh, that's always a pleasure. Uh, you, you you can lose uh, some some minutes uh, by by looking and and wandering, gliding on on a page. Uh, it's always a pleasure. Uh, and he's a charming guy. He shows up at the uh, previews and uh, other things. And uh, he, he might come in in Paris uh, at the gallery uh, this week. So um, yeah, yeah, he's a great so, guy. Yeah, absolutely, he's a very nice guy. Oh, 
Oh, DRG. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, what to say about this one? Um, this one is linked with um, crabs with uh, golden claws. Uh, it's from 1944. Uh, it comes with a certificate of the uh, foundation confirming that it's 100% by uh, RG. And uh, it's simply one of the um, most uh, iconic uh, visual in uh, Tintin uh, universe. Uh, Tintin running uh, through the souk uh, in Morocco, um, the market, sorry, uh, market, local market, uh, followed by Captain Haddock. It's in this story that um, we discover uh, Captain Haddock for uh, the first time. And um, of Captain Haddock, yeah, ab absolutely, yeah. And um, it's in fact the, um, the 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 book was issued in forty one. And uh, in that book, to answer your question of uh, earlier, um, RG did uh, normal pages with uh, different panels, and at some sections of the book you had a complete, complete full uh, illustration. Um, so that's the second version. That's not uh, the version that uh, was published in 41. And the reason is that Hergé was known um, to be uh, very tough uh, with uh, his uh, job. Um, Critical not... of his work. Sorry? Critical of his work. Yeah, a critical. Very critical uh, of his own work. Absolutely. So he did a second version uh, to give more depth uh, into the the original, and this one, the one we have, uh, was published a little bit later uh, in all the books uh, I made pictures of and linked uh, in the auction. Uh, the coloring books uh, were a huge success uh, from the start. Um, and to have an original from uh, Hergé from that period, which is considered as uh, his uh, most successful period, his best period, uh, it's impossible today. So uh, uh, I was very, very happy to, to, to have that one in the auction. Um, um, yeah. That's that's a, a true pleasure, uh, a pure uh, treasure of the Ligne Claire. So the style of uh, Hergé, uh, you see everything uh, um, who made Hergé so famous in, in that uh, original. We sold uh, last year another illustration, but a 61 uh, from 1961. And it did uh, 175k. Uh, so this one is of a higher, higher level. And yeah, they, they don't, most of them are either in uh, the safe of the foundation in Belgium, in a museum, and it will never be available on the market or in major collections and also sealed uh, for life uh, transmitted from family to family so that's a unique unique opportunity uh, for uh, the clients of uh, heritage i'm very proud of uh, of that one uh, now so you said that uh the piece is certified 100 percent. i mean how do they is there a process that they go through or, do, or is it somehow uh, 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 absolutely May I, yeah, there's, a, there's a museum and a foundation mm -hmm. in Belgium founded by the um, Hergé family originally. So that's where a lot of the artwork has been donated. So mm -hmm. they are the place. And in Europe, you know, the laws are much stricter. You know, here, if we put something in a catalog, we because we're selling it, we could put it in a catalog and put it up for sale. There's no obligation to pay the publisher or the artist. In Europe, any reproduction of, of, of uh, their characters, you have to ask permission. 
they you have to negotiate with them if they allow you to use it you have to pay them on and on um so that's that's always an issue so the foundation like the warhol museum uh, you know foundation right? they are the ultimate authority when it comes to the art now in regards to this just to you know give a quick synopsis was this is you know his early adventures were serialized in uh, in uh, Pilot magazine, and then uh, after the serialization ended, they would make a book out of their the work. So this was originally published in 1941. It was so popular that they decided to do a coloring book in 1944. Well, Hergé, instead of letting them just use the existing art that he had, he took the opportunity to redraw some of the pages because he wanted to get greater depth he was he, he became more, more and more critical of his work as he as as uh, uh, later and so he this is one of the pages that he uh, redrew and then this became like the definitive image of the book and that story which uh, where uh, he was talking about is the first story that was ever translated sold in America it's one of the most popular stories it's the most popular period of uh tintin and the character 1941 so this came out in 1944 full page and the original is still in the museum and that's the problem you, you're never going to get any of the original pages so this is as close as you'll get to uh you know having it and and it's like it's like a cover you know mm -hmm. and that that's also uh completely and and that's also um something that uh, a lot of people are looking after today instead to have a page uh, made of many panels uh, they um, today much prefer to have a huge illustration size is quite uh, size is quite uh, quite uh, nice as well um, to look at it it's more uh, readable and to come back to um, the certification uh, it started in 2010 um by um, uh, the museum uh, RG the foundation RG to protect the work of RG because RG in Europe is the one and in the world is one of the artists generating so much cash that you have a lot of forgeries on the market so um uh, the way to uh, guarantee that it's an RG uh, the only way uh, and to be sure to have a piece of importance in, in the collection is to submit the original to the uh, um, foundation. They do that uh, two to three times a year. Uh, there is a huge, huge waiting list and uh, they do between five and eight originals uh, by session. Uh, you have to pay, um, I believe it's around 500 uh, euros to get it certified. But if they have the slightest uh, doubt about the original, you don't get the uh, certification. If, uh, let's say, uh, RG did 60% of the original, you don't get the certification. It's only if they are uh, sure that it's 100% by, by RG. And for, for, let's be honest, for uh, the people buying uh, these kind of originals, it's also some kind of guarantee. Um, I was uh, talking about that uh, a week ago with uh, someone who contacted us uh, about it. You go and ask a loan at your bank and you say, I have an RG. Um, well, you come uh, with the uh, certificate it's uh, some kind of guarantee to 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 get a x amount of cash uh yeah so yeah it's as good as uh good as a note yeah that's uh that's interesting i mean clearly you know there's many artists who uh are have been susceptible over the years to forgeries so it's great that they do that i mean mobius is somebody whose work you see like you know it's like sketches that are you know or you know that are fakes i mean that's kind of a common one we, we see bob kane here in the u.s all the time right watterson Schultz. So it's it's great that there is that kind of uh, you know an entity out there who uh, verifies and legit you know legitimizes the piece as uh, you know one hundred percent with their hand, especially when they have 
you know, the work, a lot of some of the work was done in a in studio, right? So there were a few other artists that could have touched these. And so it's, in this case, it's even more useful to- uh, Absolutely, to absolutely. And, and the foundation has uh, almost all the archives of uh, what Hergé did. So they mm -hmm. can pinpoint exactly what he did or did not. And, and the committee of, uh, that produced that uh, kind of a certificate are made of five, six uh, of the most uh, well-known uh, experts uh, of RG in the world. And, and um, in Belgium, we don't see a lot of fakes, but believe me, uh, I refused a, a lot of uh, um, possible consignments and especially uh, Spain, Italy, uh, America. Um, and, and that's a shame because uh, people like uh, 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 people in America are not very used to, uh, to, to see that kind of original. So time to time, uh, people are buying originals by Hergé there and then they are coming uh, in Europe and they say, I have an Hergé and they are not uh, from from RG, so that's yeah. Well, I think it's great that they have the um, yeah. museum doing that. No, it's, that's we need and we it, need something it, like that for a lot of uh, pieces in common. Uh, absolutely, and it's quite unique uh, because you don't have that for. We spoke about Franquin. Uh, we mm -hmm. spoke about Uderzo. You don't have that, and um, about the fake and forgeries to, to close that. Uh, points, you also have a lot of uh, fake uh, Uderzo Asterix. And I mean there more sketch or uh, um, small drawings do uh, done in, in a book. So uh, please, uh, guys and, and uh, calf collectors, pay attention to that um, before yeah, buying yeah. anything uh, unpublished. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Ah, so 1939 <laughs> flash. Wow, this is beautiful. Uh, this comes again direct from the family, 1939. Um, you know, I people after the last sale, I, I heard some stuff about the 1940 that sold, and people said, Well, it, it why didn't it sell for as much as uh, you know page that sold prior or or something like that uh so maybe it's worth just explaining about flash gordon's alex raymond began flash gordon in 1934 and it seemed that as the stories developed like in the beginning it's the first appearance and he's uh arriving on a on a distant planet and introducing all of these new characters and everything else and he was just out of doing uh, comic strip, so he used a very fine line. It wasn't a lot of fin, a lot of uh, depth to the inks beyond, but his character work was always exquisite. Then in 1935, 1936, he uh, they started embarking on going into these different lands on the planet Mongo. So you know the 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 the, the the forest and the caves and the, the ice kingdom. And it, with each one of these adventures, it seemed that he would change his style from year to year. And not only his style, but the size of the originals. So in 1935-36, they, uh, they, he begins with the dry brush technique. There's a period where the, 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 the character is so popular that they decide not to have Jungle Jim and uh, flash on the same page, but they decided to give them one page each on a Sunday. So those are called the full pagers. Uh, so those are very large and they only have Flash Gordon and only Jungle Jim as a full page. Then then you get to 1937, the, the pages shrink. 1938, the pages get a little bit bigger, completely different uh, style. 1939, there's a lot of iconic images where they go into the uh, Ice Kingdom and they go into the caves, and that's the originals that have uh, things very similar to what happened in Star Wars with uh, Layla's, uh, Princess Leia's uh, uh, 
uh, you know, her haircut and the way she's got her hair and her costume and and all of that. So uh, each each segment, different collectors love different eras. Once upon a time, it was unheard of that a 1939 or that anything would sell for more than a 1935-36. Yet we've sold a 1939 for $300,000. Maybe mm -hmm. more than one. So this has become the super popular period. And there's a lot of collectors that love that period. Uh, then in 1940, it shrinks down again. So that's the explanation. You can't just go from one year to the next. You kind of have to understand the uh, genesis of the character. Now, this one, in uh, 1939, he introduces the Ice Kingdom of Phrygia, and it's one of the most popular uh, sequences, as I said. The sizes increase, and uh, he's got, he introduces a beautiful Queen Freya, as well as uh, freer, the fierce uh, Phrygian giants, so those great panels with those giants in them, and then the fantastic creatures of the kingdom, including a glacier monster, and that's who's uh, uh, featured in this uh, page. So you got a really nice jungle gym, you got a 1939, and the, the line work is exquisite. And, and the top panel, the Jungle Gym one, is also very nice. Yeah. Uh, I, I really like that one. And as many knows, uh, uh, I'm, my most favorite artist is uh, Alex Raymond. So I'm not very neutral here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a huge, huge uh, fan. I'm, 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 I'm a 36 uh, fan. Yeah, but um, um, that's, that's a very nice page. Nope. I'm not going to disagree with either on that. That's fantastic, <laughs> too. Um, and uh, we were talking about uh, some uh, different period stuff for... Uh, uh, Jean Giraud. Yes, and here yes. we have... Uh, what year was this? Uh, let's see. 72. 72? Okay. Uh, although uh, I think this might have started in 1970. It was pre-published in 70 and then published later in 72. Absolutely. Um, and this page comes from um, well the, um, the the top album in the series called Le Spectre au, au Bal d'Or is a favorite album of any uh, Jean Giraud fan on Blueberry. And uh, in this album, he's not a lieutenant of uh, the U.S. Cavalry anymore, but it's a U.S. Marshal. Uh, running after a, a villain, and um, in in this album, um, Blueberry takes all his uh, depth. Uh, is be is becoming more um, marked in the face. Uh, um, it, yeah, it's it's just a gem, and and the size of this one is also uh, bigger than the other one we have from earlier uh, story. And uh, you have the main characters of uh, the story there, Maclure, uh, the companion of, uh, of uh, Blueberry, uh, the two villains on the top, pay, uh, on, uh, the top panels, and uh, the Indians uh, in the lower uh, part of, um, of, um, of the page. So, yeah. And I'm not surprised that it's already at uh, 29th without a BP, uh, 21, sorry, uh, without a BP. It could be uh, over the, the, the 30 without any problem. Uh, pages from that story are amazingly rare. That's gorgeous. I love the, uh, the, uh the gun through the sound effect there that's yeah yeah and in in part. fact it's it's um it, it's it's how can i say a, a movie by by, by itself uh, the, mm -hmm. the succession of the panel it's like it, you you can read that uh, as a movie it's it's amazing and the construction as well uh, uh, the character of a blueberry uh, falling from from his house uh, going into another panel um, I, I really like that. So. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. 
That's wow. an unbelievable difference in style between that and the Moebius, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and in between that one and the other blueberry that, that we have, which yeah. was uh, his earliest uh, period, a little bit more linked with another artist, uh, JJ, Joseph yeah. uh, Gillin. Mm -hmm. um, and his style completely evolved. And as I said, uh, all the dimension, all the depth of the blueberry character uh, came up in that volume. So that's, that's an amazing, uh, amazing page. All right, so... Uh, uh, William Vance. Yes, yeah. William Vance, uh, another uh, Belgium uh, legend. Um, on his uh, Bruno Brazil uh, series. And uh, Br Bruno Brazil was, in fact, uh, the chief of a uh, special unit of uh, the Secret Service called the Cayman uh, Commando. And uh, that is the issue number three, where they are uh, confronted to uh, enemy um, without a face. And that's the title, in fact, of the issue, Les Yeux Sans Visage, so the eyes uh, without, uh, without a face. And that's, in fact, the, the villain, a gorgeous uh, lady uh, from the issue number two, who takes a revenge on uh, Bruno Brazil and all his team uh, by um, um, hypnotizing them and, and making them killing other people and, and uh, trying to, to, to kill, in fact, uh, Bruno Brazil. So that's uh, William Vance, very stylish, uh, one of my favorite artists in uh, the Belgium, uh, Belgium universe. Um, yeah, that's that's typical from the from the 70s, um, a huge, huge original. It's on display at the gallery. So if you are around in Paris, please come by. Uh, you will fall in love uh, with, with that. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, this is a secret agent um, series that began in uh, 1967. So, you know, man, think man from uncle, think James Bond. Uh, and all the rest. So uh, uh, this was the most popular uh, comic book, Secret Agent, uh, at the time. So it it was kind of um, in in France they they have OSS 117 Special mm -hmm. Agent mm -hmm. who came um, Bonisseur de la Batte who came just before uh, the James Bond story. And you can link a little bit the, the universe with um, a, a fantastic site uh, as well. Uh, so yeah, that's that's a gorgeous page. And and the uh, these don't come uh, on 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 the market. So you have only ten uh, albums in the series mm -hmm. uh, from sixty nine to seventy seven. Um, so um, and the, the the number three is to me uh, one of the best. So the covers, only 10 covers on the market. Yeah. And, and they're all and painted covers as well. Uh, absolutely. It was a yeah. uh, style. Uh, yeah. yeah. So. Oh, that's yeah that's, nice. What is that? About $30,000 estimate on that? Mm, 10 years ago, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would love to the uh, 30,000 um, uh, on that one. Um, 15 25 oh, okay yeah they don't they don't they are, they are none on, on the market so um and it's uh, quite low at the moment so they, they, there is a uh, a nice struggle uh, coming up uh, for the saturday so i'm mm -hmm. sure of that yeah good uh, uh, meta baron uh, yeah. yes that's that's an amazing amazing uh, we have uh, two covers from the meta baron we have that one uh, father mother and the last one of uh, the the last one uh, closing the meta baron saga so um just um, one step back uh, meta barons uh, in fact appears in the incal uh, from uh, mobius is one of the key character in in the uh, Incal storyline, and in, in fact the Meta Baron is uh, some kind of um, 
a killer, um, a bounty hunter, the most feared uh, person in the universe. And um, when the Incald finished at the end of um, the 80s, uh, Jodorowsky, uh, the script uh, writer and Mobius, um, team up, uh, teamed up uh, sorry, at the time with uh, Juan Gimenez to, um, to give a little bit more uh, story about the Meta Baron and the explanation about who the Meta Baron and all the family line uh, were coming from. And uh, while well, Meta Baron today on the market is one of the most iconic sci fi uh, story uh, line. In, in comics, uh, pure and simple. Uh, Jodorowsky uh, is completely uh, crazy in his head about Im imagination. And, and uh, I'm not surprised that he, he teamed with uh, Mobius at the time to, to create uh, that, uh, that universe. And, and, and Gimenez, uh, well, he took over uh, Big Shoes, uh, the, the, the one of, uh, of Mobius at the time. And it did an amazing, amazing, amazing job. Um, that cover um, is is a is a piece of art, and you have to know that um, uh, Gimenez was working on a small size uh, paper on on the Metabaron, and he did two, three covers on the wool Metabaron run in a bigger uh, uh, size, and that's one of them, and uh, that. That piece is just uh, um, amazing. Um, so, in in the storyline, the Meta Baron uh, is giving, um, in fact, um, the task to protect um, the the son of uh, Amina and and John De Fool. Uh, John De Fool be, being the PR uh, detective in the Incal. Um, and this, uh, the, the baby is a uh, saloon. Uh, and yeah, that page um, is just a, a feast uh, for, for, uh, for the eyes. We have um, also in the same auction, um, so I mentioned another cover, but also five pages from the Metabaron number one. As you know, we have the exclusive on the world story of the Metabaron number one. And uh, we have one, um, I placed one of the pages uh, and why, why that one uh, in the platinum section, just because um, uh, it was one of the most favorite of uh, Juan Gibbonez. So amazing. I'm, I'm a huge, huge fan and uh, his work in the- in Could the you tell Bill? I can tell. <laughs> He's a huge no, fan. No, I, I, I've always, yeah, I've only read a little bit, but I've always really appreciated, uh, you know, Juan's work on this. And it's it was so well suited, his style was su so suited for it. And uh, I haven't seen a piece by him that I, I've not really enjoyed and, uh, you know, and, and lingered on watching, looking at it. And, you know, you can skip over a lot of artwork. There's so much out, out there, but, but Juan's somebody whose work is always very striking. And I, I'm sure that helped. Uh, you know, the, the popularity of uh, the stories and, and, and whatnot, because his, his artwork is just so memorable and fantastic. And uh, please, um, if you have the time to, um, to have a look at the page uh, 17 in the platinum uh, section, that page is just, uh, sorry, that page is just amazing. That's the page I mentioned, one of the favorites of uh, Juan Gimenez. And it's in fact the precise moment when uh, the father is transmitting um, all the knowledge and, and the powers of uh, the Meta Baron uh, to his son. And it's called the Rite of Passage. Um, and that page is uh, just gorgeous. Uh, that's a, an amazing page. Beautiful. Uh, so now something uh, a little bit more up some of the uh, U.S. audiences, uh, Ali, a, a Magnolia uh, Hellboy in Hell number five. Yep. This is <laughs> pretty uh, stunning uh, variant cover featuring Hellboy. Yeah. It's 
for the second story arc of the Hellboy in Hell series. Uh, does a beautiful job of framing it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's so stylized. It's uh, it's beautiful. It's striking. It's unmistakably uh, Mignola. And uh, yeah, what what else could I say? Well, um, a master of uh, the black and white. Um, and there as well, I'm not very neutral about uh, Mike, a good friend. Uh, I really love uh, what he does. I'm more linked to what he did in the 80s uh, because he had a completely uh, other style, a complete, sorry, uh, other style. But what he did on Hellboy is uh, till today unmatched. And, and uh, his inking is just amazing. And uh, every, every uh, time I'm discovering something from him, I'm, I'm falling in love, in fact. So, yeah. yeah it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's everything you'd want in a piece by Mike. You Absolutely. Of, uh, you have all the codes of uh, Hellboy in, in, uh -huh. in, in that uh, variant cover. Yeah, we, we had a few of these in, in the last uh two uh inter international auction and um yeah completely amazing i'm sure there are quite a few pieces by mike in europe uh, oh yes somebody... <laughs> <laughs> i know a few collectors who are you know yeah, that are that are publicly you know high uh heavy collectors of his work but um but yeah his is uh i i think a his brand of storytelling and his styles are very uh, you know, fit very much a European mindset, I think, for what's beautiful in the narrative arts. And yeah, absolutely. This is a great example. Belgium, France, and, and Italy, uh, especially. Yes. Well, a little bit of Frank Miller here. Also, a master of uh, black and white. The lower panel is uh, just uh, a feast for the eye, uh, eyes. Yeah, that's that's just amazing. Yep, this is uh, Sin City, uh, 1999, Delia stare, leans out of the window, staring at the corpse, uh, a henchman who just tried to kill her and Wallace. Uh, so, you know, Sin City first appeared in 1991, this is 1999, and uh, they seem to get more and more popular every, every auction. I thought it was great to contrast the two. Uh, the two pieces, the Mignola and uh, and the Frank Miller from the period, because yeah, it's, it's pretty much in the same school, film noir all the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have a similar method of filling in the blacks too. Um, you know, it's, there's so many uh, so many artists today that uh, when they're working on their uh, pages, will will leave that. And do that digitally you know they'll link all the details but they'll leave that but when it's time to sell it they'll fill it in right but i i don't think miller or, or, or mike you know kind of adhered to that i mean they were they were pretty much finished the way they exact way they wanted them you know no shortcuts and that's uh that's what always made their artwork so uh so intriguing and unique um i, th I think and so yeah this is a great page and the last panel is phenomenal good point very good point yeah now switching over to uh, John Romita Jr. and and his uh, definitely uh, my my favorite inker on him, Al Williamson for a Daredevil cover. I mean, Romita Jr. has become one of the hottest artists out there. I mean, the prices that we're getting for Romita Jr. art is astounding. You know, uh, I you, you you speak to John or you watch him uh, do interviews, and you you know he had a chip on his shoulder, and he's trying to prove well. He doesn't have to prove anything anymore. I mean, if, based on the results, his uh, popularity is uh, cemented. You know what I mean? Uh, here's a, a, you know, from the series, a, a, a really nice Daredevil cover with, like you say, Williamson inks, and he's trapped in Mephisto's realm. Uh, it's a chilling cover from the Twilight of the Idol uh, uh, series. Uh, beautiful line work. Uh, very different. You know, it's a little unique, uh, considering, and uh, yeah, it, it, it's John Romita Jr. That's it. Yeah, and composition is indeed, uh, and on 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 the duo, uh, uh, artist and and inker and composition of uh, 
the, the cover quite unique, in fact. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, uh, uh, I don't know, I, I, I own a few pieces by, by him. And I think the one thing you can see when you look throughout his career, you know, it, his style, uh, at least in his his anatomy was always kind of is fairly consistent. You know, maybe the way he renders it is a little different, and uh, but but I think that's one of his strong points. Uh, you know, just historically, and you do see that today in the sales of his work. I mean, it's gone up dramatically in the last, I'd say, like two, three years. It was, you know, it's just it's he's really kind of the market's really established itself well for him. Um, yeah, which is nice to see. I mean, it's hard to say, you know, it used to be Magnola Life, for instance, sold for significant, so, he seemed to sell for a lot of money several years ago. Now, in my opinion, he's one of the most undervalued artists. And, um, yeah, Ramita Jr. is really caught up as well. So mm -hmm. I think Magnola is undervalued. I think uh, Ramita is just hitting his stride. Now these are uh, <laughs> these are highly sought after by many collectors, uh, both uh, European and non-European. I think everybody would love to have a great example um, from Brian from anything from 2000 AD. Uh, mm -hmm. It almost doesn't matter what it is. And uh, wow! And this and, is, and this one is very special. Yeah. yeah, this one is very special because. It's the, the story, crime, and um, uh, punishment uh, in which uh, the judge dread is judged. Uh, and uh, that's what I, I joked about in the description. Judge uh, mm. uh, dread you under the law. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's, it's the story where, where um, we, we uh, see um, uh, Judge Cal uh the the one in the the first panel on the top uh with uh, the chief uh, judge um some kind of uh inside uh police uh police team uh watching all the uh, other uh judges and he's completely corrupted uh he's completely insane um and in fact uh, the judge uh, dread is um uh, judge for a crime he didn't commit it. Um, people saw uh, the crime committed by a judge Red, and at the end of the story, uh, we we know that, uh, that there is a clone of Dread, which is uh, some kind of a robot android uh, filled with all the files of Dread and uh, acting like like uh, like Dread, and um, in that page. You have uh, Judge Cal, uh, you have Judge Red uh, with uh, uh, handcuffs, and, and you have the last panel uh, in, in the <clears throat> uh, spaceship uh, when he's taking away and, and dropped on Titan, uh, which is the uh, planet where um, the, the prison planet, in fact, a uh, prison Thank planet, you, in yeah. fact. Um, and also the prison where uh, previously uh, um, Judge Red's uh, brother uh, Rico was sent. Um, so um, you have everything on, on this page. And uh, the judge being judge, well, you don't see that um, uh, many often in the storyline uh, of, uh, of Dredd. So that's, that's a great page. Somebody's going to be very happy when they walk away with this one. Oh yes, <laughs> and I have other. Um, we have other uh, really nice Dread uh, originals in the, in this uh, catalog. This one's nice, and I like this period. This is uh, yeah. He began <laughs> on Dread in '77, and this is uh, early. Or well, this is uh, what is it, 1978? Yeah. So this is only. Uh, 40 issues later so they, it was a weekly so it's within the first year of him beginning so he's really you know trying to you know prove his worth on uh, at this point not that he ever took shortcuts bowling i mean yeah, you know, a super detailed work but uh, really strong and you know powerful here and and boland is is coming also very uh 
becoming also very higher and higher in, in, oh, in the yeah. market boards. Oh, for sure. We, we, we just uh, sold the uh, Animal Man cover uh, one for over uh, 100K. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I have a friend who has an Animal Man cover and he, he, he's not <laughs> a big collector these days. And I, I let him know that happened and he was <laughs> a little surprised. I mean, his is a little later, but still just the idea that uh you know i think he has something in the mid-20s or something but still well, the idea. The, these cover were uh, amazing we we sold i believe the 56 a few years ago which i really love uh that's i, I much prefer uh, honestly the 56 and the the, the first but the the job uh, uh brian uh, did on these are uh, is is completely amazing I have never, uh, never owned anything by Brian. I hate to say it. Oh man. So we have a Kirby early Kirby interior from, uh, 27, issue 27. We, we have two. In fact, we have two from the same story. We have okay. the page number three, I believe. Is that the three or yeah, page three and, and then the, the page 22. So also, um, a little more action in this one yes and the, the, the other one well you have the story in fact uh, i love in the page three the um, composition of the page because you have the three panels on the top uh in which um uh, reed is uh, saying that he, he will uh, uh make a surprise for uh for sue and and then you have uh the two um middle panels uh uh, plunging us and the word is uh, plunging into uh, uh, Prince Nemo, um, who is, by the way, my favorite character, um, into his palace and the lower three panels when uh, Nemo, um, uh, on the opposite of the three first, is saying uh, she's mine and uh, I want her. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I really love that, that that one. And the other one is, I'm not surprised that it's a little bit higher. Uh, it's a little bit more uh, an action-packed uh, uh, page. Yeah. And I really like, I'm, uh, I know that I'm all the time uh, making some uh, enemies, but I'm not a huge Kirby fan. I know, I know. But that period, I really love. Uh, well, um, I, you know, nothing against that. I think a lot of people, uh, you know, it's, it, a lot of it's based on uh, when you started reading comics. I think I was Kirby was a, I didn't I didn't I wasn't a fan of Kirby when I was younger. You know, I was like, why are they letting this old guy draw these draw these books in the seventies? You know, they should move out. Let let John Byrne and uh, George Perez do all the uh, do all these action comics. Uh, mm -hmm. But you know, now I, I completely view it. You know, much differently. But. Uh, but yeah, there was a point in time where I, I didn't think all very highly of Kirby, but uh, but yeah, these are our historic pages, and uh, absolutely, <laughs> he usually gets his way, so these are fun. <laughs> let's uh, let's see here. Oh, next one. Here we go. So, uh, oh yeah, this um, is fun. Jean, Jean Frisano. So you you can see him uh, in Europe as the. Um, cultural uh, ambassador of um, US comics. Um, he is the one who made all the US comics uh, famous in, in uh, France and in the French uh, part of Belgium. Um, and um, his impact was huge and uh, is one of the reasons why I, I started in, in the 70s to, uh, to read comics. Um, his work really popularized the, the superhero uh, on, the French, uh, on the French market. Mm -hmm. A strange magazine, the publisher was Luc. Luc uh, being in Lyon. And Luc being the Roman name of, of the, the city of Lyon. So uh, Luc is now uh, Luc Semic Marvel. Uh, and it was at the time the most important publisher in, in Europe. And um, the first cover of uh, Frisano was uh, in 69 uh, for uh, 
The Fantasque uh, Comic Pocket uh, number seven, if I remember, yes, seven. And after uh, the success of the the, the Strange, uh, well, uh, we 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 had um, Strange Nova, Spidey, Titan, uh, special special Strange uh, Origin, um, and and in fact, I I picked that. Uh, that image. Um, also, I was not very neutral <laughs> about it, but uh, it made a, a lot of uh, impact on me when I when I was a kid. And um, in issue one thirty three of Strange, uh, the first story of Rome uh, came uh, in Europe. Uh, it was uh, eighty one. And uh, due to the success of the story, uh, Strange and, and Luke uh, took uh, the decision to uh, give the cover of uh, the issue 134 uh, to, to Rom, who also is one of uh, my uh, most favorite characters. I, I really love the story uh, uh, behind, uh, behind uh, Rom uh, seeking revenge on, on the invaders, uh, sacrifice, uh, um, he sacrifices his body. Uh, to uh, to be able to uh, pursue uh, the wraith uh, through the galaxy, so and and the image is just breathtaking, a uh, breathtaking, and we 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 have in fact from Jean Frisano, and and these are also very very tough to get on on the market, because almost all the uh, covers from Frisano are in the hands of maybe three to five uh, collectors uh, and um, we have one of Rome we have another one of the Fantastic Four we we had one uh, I believe in March uh, 23 uh, it did uh, pretty well around the 15k and we have one of the Conan uh, story uh, story uh, line just to just again uh, people ask how come Marvel and uh, were so popular in Europe. They had uh, a magazine. They didn't call it by the U.S. names. They had Strange Magazine and they had Titans. And they would reprint the Marvel stories in Europe with different covers. So sometimes you see, I, I mean, I had a lot of uh, Infantino would do, uh, would be commissioned to do different covers. They'd always uh, put different covers on the European editions, but when they decided to do something there and they wanted a painted cover, it was Frisano that they that they went to, and so he did a lot of the best images. This was like like the second appearance of Ram, and uh, uh, and uh, yeah, this was like a definitive image over there. So uh, almost all the Europeans, if you ask them, did they grow up with you know, Spider-Man. Well, they did, but not in Spider-Man magazine. That, mm -hmm. That's where it was in, the, you know, it was reprinted in something else. Well, it's a beautiful Absolutely. image, too. And, it, you know, I, I get the idea of, you know, repackaging the stories uh, for a different audience, but uh, it worked well, right? And it created oh. some memorable artwork. Honestly, this piece would look really interesting on your wall, Olivier. I mean, it's the, you know the you have that orange kind of going on there. It, it, I don't know if it's meant to be on your wall or it's or it's the wrong piece of art to hang on your wall. But I'd be curious to see it behind you. There. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, we gotta go full like screen. <laughs> well, I guess it might get a little lost, but still. Oh yeah, it's uh, the cover. He put it on the cover of the catalog. I mean, that's yeah, the, absolutely, that's the absolutely. Very good yeah, amount of no art that he's got. He, he chose this for the cover. That's a, that's the reason why I uh, I, I say that uh, I was not very neutral because I didn't pick the cover uh, by the value of the original as we mm -hmm. most of the time do, uh, but uh, because of the historical important important story of uh, the original. Um, so yeah, yeah. Well. I think, uh, well, how often are you going to get to see Rom on the cover of an auction catalog? Almost never, but this piece definitely deserves to be there. Well, uh, you, you combine, you combine uh, European markets and, and U.S. markets, so that's also the, the, a little bit the, the spirit uh, behind mm -hmm. the international uh, catalog, so, yeah. Right, 
Very true. Uh, let's see here. Next one. Oh, yeah. It's the Silvestri Wolverine page. Uh, Dan Green, Hillary Barta Inks. Uh, yeah. That's Tom a, Palmer. Uh, Palmer as well. Was that? Yeah, you're right. I didn't realize that. Yeah. This is Wolverine. one of seven Wolverine pages that are in the sale. Uh, and, you know, the thing about Silvestri is that he's probably the least uh, discussed of the image guys. Yet, if you ever talk to any of the image guys or you ever watch any of the interviews, they all felt that Silvestri could draw circles around anything that they did. So they had a tremendous amount of respect for uh, uh for Silvestri, you know, he's currently what the co CEO of uh, Image. So, you know, I think his artwork is reasonable considering. And I mean, take a look at this page Wolverine all over it. Uh, uh, you know, Gene Scott and Jubilee look on, and uh, pretty intense issue where Logan, exploring his past, discovers the location of his memory implants where they were created during the Weapon X project. It's it's the era I love the most uh, in in probably in U.S. comics because I was a little bit older and I understood a little bit more, and I, I really love uh, Silvestri. And when I discovered uh, the the collection, it was one person collecting only Wolverine originals, and uh, I flipped the pages and and I saw one Silvestri, and I said, "Oh, that's pretty rare." And he was laughing. He said, wait. And, and then I said, a second one, a third one. Oh, I said, what? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that, that was uh, that was completely crazy. So um, and and it's it's the time to buy them because um, I completely uh, agree with uh, Joe Annalise uh, on, on Silvestri. I'm sure that in the coming year, Silvestri will go higher and higher and higher in, in prices. So, um, and these pages are, are simply uh, gorgeous. Um, I love the um, etching on, on, on the back, uh, the lines. Uh, it reminds me of uh, some uh, etching made, uh, um, etching, sorry, made by uh, Mignola on, mm -hmm. on some of these uh, stories. So, um, yeah. <clears throat> I own a few uh, Sylvester pages from this era myself. So, I've got a Wolverine, an uh, Uncanny page. and. Yeah, I mean, I they're I I always appreciated his style, I, and uh, so you can't come. I, I think all the image guys were fairly unique in their approaches, but uh, what uh, I don't I guess I've I've heard the same thing that uh, Sylvester seems you know to really get the least amount of respect, but um, but he certainly was. Uh, you know, I think he was incredibly talented at this point. In his uh, absolutely. I, I completely agree. I, I really like his line and the, defi the definition of. Uh, of uh, his line, uh, it's like uh, Jim Lee. Uh, I mean, I've always been a huge fan of Jim Lee from uh, the era, uh, early '90s uh, extension uh, agenda, and and you, you you can a little bit see uh, the the same style and and uh, and and movement uh, dynamic, and uh, I really like that uh, that uh, era. Well, that's a nice one. It's seventy-seven fifty right now. Wow. Yes, the, there is another one, I believe, uh, reaching uh, already ten k. I believe. Um, yeah, I could have picked any number of these, but uh, this one had the large panel, and mm -hmm. it's just impressive. Oh, yes, that one I believe is uh, higher in price. Um, well, it's uh, well, it, it looks a little lower, but still, it's a fan. That's a great piece too. Yes, like with that. the reflection with all the uh, instruments, uh, like yeah. in uh, weapon, weapon X. Um, so um, yes, absolutely. That's that's wow. a great page. Yeah, I'm I'm sure that it, this one will go higher than uh, than than K. Easy. Yeah, no, that without question. Wow, that's <clears throat> yeah, you've got a lot of uh, bangers in the uh, in the set here, as they say. It's a, they're all fans. There's so many fantastic pieces in this auction. I'm going to grab a water. Excuse me. I forgot to all right. So we have, uh, uh, who's, uh, oh, oh, Marini. Uh, so that's, that's, that's the cover uh, I was speaking about uh, from the uh, 
uh, Batman uh, Dark Prince uh, Charming, and that's the uh, collection uh, cover, and that's the ultimate uh, cover. Uh, and again, there uh, you, you you can uh, uh, see um, Enrico works on on the color and deep deep color and and always the uh, he has the the the, the way to um, pop up. Uh, the, the the characters and and you have in fact there Batman Catwoman and the Joker uh, with the the head uh, in fact yes the the head of the gargoyle uh, so you have uh, the duo uh, the love duo made by Catwoman and and Batman and the hate duo uh, between the the Joker and 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 Batman so and uh, yeah. Uh, another uh, amazing page and i believe that um enrico shared um because this one uh, comes from uh, his private collection and uh, he made a post or two on his uh, facebook or instagram uh, with all the process of uh, the production of uh, of uh, that original so if you are interested to uh, to have a look uh, a look sorry um at uh is um in instagram or facebook have a look at both uh, i don't remember um always very interesting to see uh, an artist doing uh, an original in, in direct well, it's uh it's beautiful and um yeah. i think enrico is going to be at uh como mm -hmm. this year too absolutely he, he will be there with uh uh, at the table of uh, Bernard Maé. Uh, Bernard is the one uh, representing uh, Enrico with mm -hmm. uh, Sean Murphy, with uh, Juanjo uh, Guarnido, um, and a few others, uh, a few other surprises. I cannot reveal everything. <laughs> I understand. You got to hold a few things back, but yeah, no, this is fantastic. Absolutely. I love, Absolutely. Yeah, I love the. Uh, yeah, you know, I love this the uh, simple background, but it, it works really well. I mean, with it, it helps <clears> the <throat> thing, helps the characters pop very, very nicely. I always like Marini's work. Um, then uh, so very different. You get a Don Rosa piece. Uh, this is um, very very nicely done as always. Think of that. Well, we, we've discussed uh, that we've had the opportunity to sell the life and times of Scrooge McDuck. It was the 12-part series that Don did, uh, is, which was a prequel of the entire life of Uncle Scrooge. And Don took the time to go through every single comic book, every Barks comic, and any mention whatsoever and then he took that and then expanded on it in a series, which became, it was first published in Europe, uh, ironically, and became incredibly popular immediately and then was republished in the United States. So we have auctioned uh, issues one to t uh, 11 and they've done incredibly well, uh, well surpassing what the uh, overall price should have been. And now this is issue 12. And at this point, finally, Scrooge gets his money bin. And in this splash, which is the one I selected, we have the entire book in the sale, including the cover. So all the other pages are in the book. And uh, some of the lots are multiple pages in one lot. But in this splash, he's sitting in the middle of uh, the iconic thing. He's swimming in his money bin. And now he's thinking about all the adventures that he's had in the previous 11 issues. So how he meets uh, Goldie Goal and, you know, all the places he went and all in one page. So I, I think this is a great splash. And you know, look at the amount of detail. I mean, the time Don did. And, you know, he, he had a problem with his eyes, so he can't draw anymore. Um, so, you know, this is, this is all there is. Fantastic. Now is this, uh, yeah, okay. So this is the uh, page sixteen splash from that. Okay. No, this is uh, this is this is a special piece. Then uh, Alex Ross. 
What would, what would an auction of this caliber be without an Alex Ross in it, right? Mm. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's a pretty nice cover. Uh, I was very happy to, to have it for, uh, for the auction. Number one, with um, the, the Guardians, the original team, and, mm -hmm. and yeah, well, the realistic uh, style of, uh, of Alex on, 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 on this. And, and really a, a great page. And, and the colors are not uh, really the, the ones uh, of the original. That's the problem of uh, I'm, I'm scanning nothing. So I'm taking everything in on, uh, of, I'm taking pictures of everything. Um, I hate scanners. So that's, that's okay. the most uh, re uh, reasons. Uh, and um, the colors of uh, the originals are a little bit more uh, deeper uh, than, than the, this one. Um, so that, that's a beautiful, beautiful page. No arguments for me on that one either. Uh, yeah, it's fantastic. Oh, oh Frank P. Frank P. So you, you know that uh, something uh, you maybe noticed in the international catalogs is that, uh, well, I'm passionate about the comics in, in general, and I give um, some kind of a tribute to uh, artists uh, in each catalog. And this one, I gave the tribute to uh, Frank P. Frank P uh, being an uh, incredible uh, gentleman and a uh, beautiful human being and um, uh, animal lover. Um, so um, he's fighting um, uh, for the rights of uh, the animal worlds and uh, he dedicated uh, a whole part of his uh, art on animals. So uh, he started in uh, Tintin magazine and Spirou magazine. And then he created a story uh, called Bosai. We have a page from the uh, storyline uh in the the uh, auction uh, they are also very rare um then he did um um he dedicated a complete book to uh, mackay and little nemo we also have a beautiful page a huge one made of uh, three parts uh on the uh, universe of uh, little nemo um then he invented zoo and that's the the, the, the one it's in fact um, some kind of a paradise a refuge for animals uh, taking refuge uh, during a war uh, about um, uh, again sorry um, the cruelty of uh, the man and Manon is the main character and she's the caretaker of uh, all these uh, animals and many many years ago i believe in 2010 uh, you have to to check the description of the catalog i believe um frank did uh, an exhibit in in a castle in belgium and he dedicated uh, the exhibit to uh, zoo but in the musha style so uh, alphonse musha the uh, world famous uh, painter and um everything was so you know the great you know and everything was sold i believe he did 10 12 illustration in that style and everything was sold in two three minutes uh, like that and uh that's the last one he did and uh, he closed the book on that and uh from that image, uh, uh, there was a lithograph, a limited lithograph of 40, uh, 40 uh, pieces made at the uh, gallery in, in Paris. So that's a beautiful, beautiful piece of art. Um, yeah, his and, work looks like fine art. If you ever see one in person, they're very impressive. I mean, those little Nemo pages, Bernard did an exhibit of it. He published the book. We we sell the books they are very expensive and uh but the the originals and his his uh the delicacy of his of his work is is absolutely beautiful and he loves doing animals so um mm -hmm. yeah, this is a prime piece and if, if you had this up on the wall you you know it doesn't look like comic art you know it's it's mm -hmm. beautiful 
We we have another illustration of uh, Frank in in the in the catalogue um, from the beasts. And the beast is uh, taken by uh, Frank from the um, uh, André Franquin universe. Uh, André Franquin um, in created, invented my most favorite uh, animal in comics called the Marsipulami. And uh, he dedicated two books on, on the Marsipulami that he called The Beast. Um, and I highly recommend uh, all the, the, the people uh, listening to the uh, to the podcast here um, please buy buy that book you, you will not be uh, disappointed so that's beautiful universe full of emotion and and amazing amazing talent and it's also coming 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 up in in, in prices so that's a, the the good time to to buy something from uh, frank uh, today I'm gonna have to look out for that. Yes, please do. Yeah. If you need any uh, references, uh, please don't hesitate to call me to to mail me. Uh, I believe I I left. Yeah, my uh, I um, left my uh, email in email. The, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I will be glad to share uh, any uh, anything on on that uh, universe. All right. You, you you will be uh, my expert when I when I need advice. That's for sure. Okay. Uh, so we have a Manara. Please. Yes, and something um, where we don't have a huge uh, black square box in in the catalog, uh, but Manara because most of the time Manara, you know, it's mm -hmm. uh, very uh, erotical and and um, so you have to hide everything. And this one is just uh, beautiful. Uh, it's very elegant. Uh, you can hang that on your wall without any problem. It was taken uh, out of an idea of a movie uh, by Federico Fellini. Um, and it's one of the nicest and, and uh, well-known uh, images uh, from uh, um, uh, Manara uh, world, so uh, beautiful, beautiful piece. No, well, I agree. I mean, it's uh, yeah, we don't get to show too many pieces by Manara on the on the channel for that very reason. I mean, having to cover <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. And <laughs> it's like surfery pieces, I, very rare. It's uh, I featured pieces <laughs> specifically because there was no nudity in them. And I'm like, this might be the only time I can show one of Surfieri's piece on the piece on the channel, and it's beautiful. But you know, it's not what he, what we what we collect them for. But it's still a wonderful piece, and this is this is fantastic too. And and the composition is is very nice. Uh, you, you have a nice balance on the on the colors, the perspective, and and everything works in in that one. So uh, there is nothing to throw uh, there. Uh, I really like it, and and I'm I'm not a, a Manara fan. So, uh, but that one I really like. So we've got a uh, Paul Pope Pope. Batman page here that's already doing pretty well, almost to 10,000. Yes, um, a great page as well. Um, one of the fight with the uh, doc unit of uh, uh, the cops team. And uh, it's the moment when he's going into the lab to, to steal some uh, sample. And uh, I, I really liked uh, that moment because it's the, the, the moment when he's putting some uh, crazy uh, teeth uh, to uh, make some uh, everyone afraid. And, and uh, it's strange because we had maybe in the three catalogs uh, Pulp Up uh, originals, but before they were uh, completely hidden. No one was talking about it. And, and uh, since the three last catalogs, we, we have a few of these and always very good pieces. And, and they are coming higher and higher and higher in prices. So that's also the good moment to buy one. Um, <clears throat> because you don't have many of these uh, with a fighting, uh, with a great composition. And um, yeah, that's, that's a great. lot of action. The interesting thing about uh, Paul Pope is that you know he's U.S. born and lives in New York, 
and yet he's been adopted by uh, the international uh, fandom. Uh, they seem he seems to be uh, as you know as if he was a European. That's how popular he is over there. Uh, so that's one of the reasons that is uh, the value's been going up because there's a lot of demand on both sides of the continent. Yes, and his, his drawing is not very, how can I say, uh, comics, US comic style, you know? Uh, it's not traditional, no. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. And that's. He's got his own style, he's unique. I, I, completely. And, and, yeah. and honestly, uh, as well, the, the size of the, the board he's using, that's huge, huge, huge uh, size of boards. Yeah, so that's a very too. nice piece of. Uh, of art that you you can hang uh, on your wall, so that's um, yeah. Yeah, I've seen several pieces by him, and they're usually oversized, and uh, yeah, they're very impressive. And, and this like one is very clean as well, <laughs> because I saw a few ones with uh, yeah, but this one is is perfect. <laughs> well, it's, it's uh, like I say, it's almost a ten. It's gonna it's gonna go a little bit higher than that. Ah, and then we have a, have a crumb, uh, wonderful, from Cavalier Magazine. From uh, we have a couple uh, of crumbs, but uh, this is 68. one. That, this wow. is one we can show a bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, a bit. The year I was born, right here. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, these. This is this is. I, I looked at this earlier. I thought this thing was fa fantastic. Wow. Well, Fritz the Cat is synonymous with you know. Robert Crumb, of course, he created yep. it, became the uh, infamous 1972 Ralph Bakshi uh, movie. Um, it was, uh, yeah, actually started in uh, Help magazine, uh, and it was uh, Harvey Kurtzman that was the editor. So he took, he was the one that took the chance and uh, published it. And uh, his first appearance was in uh, 1965. Uh, uh, of course, now he's become iconic uh, and uh, probably the single most popular character to, to ever come out of the underground movement that I can think of. Mm -hmm. Well, this is, uh, yeah, I've, I've never owned anything by Crumb, and yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd love to have a piece uh, from this era from him, especially something like this with Fritz the Cat on it, yeah. Wow. Yeah, we we have a great underground selection in in this catalog. Uh, we have a huge, huge community in Europe uh, loving that that kind of originals as well. So um, always like to uh, um, list uh, a few of these uh, originals with maybe um, a good surprise in uh, in September October. We will have a major uh, piece uh, of underground. Uh, uh, in that catalog. Um, that's a nice uh, tease for uh, next fall. Absolutely. <laughs> what, what is this one at, Olivier? Do you know? Oh, this, this one's uh, 8,500 right now. Yeah. I but, mean, that's, this is a, this is, yeah, if you're going to have one page of crumb and you're going to have one example and, you know, he, his line is so unique. I mean, this is, this is kind of it. You don't need to, to do much more. From all the crumbs in in the catalog, that's my 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 favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I agree. Mm. Uh, let's see here. Oh. oh, that one. Well, that one is very very special. Uh, it's the unique copy, uh, and it's the private copy of uh, Alexandre Bergman, who was a close friend of uh, Hergé. And they met in the early 40s, and um, Beckman uh, was uh, passionate about uh, um, uh, naval story. He published two books, one in 42 and one in 43, limited at the time. And uh, due to his knowledge, he became um, uh, Hergé advisor on um, the naval uh, stuff. So when Hergé was doing something uh, with the boat, uh, Alexandre was his um, was his um, uh, advisor. Yep. Yeah, absolutely expert. Thank you, Joe. 
And um, this book was published in 43 in a soft cover. Uh, we, we, we have the image of, uh, of the soft cover uh, in the, uh, in the uh, uh, yeah, that, that's the one. Um, so that's uh, the uh, original book. And uh, from the 600s was um, made uh, a single book in leather bounds, a unique book as written there, um, bearing the number 00, zero uh, signed by uh, Beckman and um, with an illustration um, that you see now of uh, Tintin, Haddock and Snowy, and Milou, at the entrance of the museum which uh, was taken later in 57 uh, as a postal card for uh, wishing the, the, the best wishes at the end of uh, the year. It's one of the most iconic uh, image, um, uh, sketch image by, made by, by Hergé. Mm -hmm. And uh, not only we have that, but we also have, um, if, um, you, you, if you can uh, go back on the cover, which which is yes that one um you see um the drawing was made in fact by Hergé you see uh mm -hmm. for his friends uh and we have the original of that cover included uh, as well it's always uh, pictured a little bit uh, further in in the images uh in ink uh china ink so we have not only the cover that one which I agree is not very special, but that's a piece of history. We have uh, the uh, drawing illustration um, uh, hand colored uh, by, by Hergé. And uh, all the boats uh, were also uh, hand colored by Maurice Segers, a close friend of, uh, yes, everything there is hand colored. So it's not printed and it's unique to the book. And at the end of the book, um, um, Alexandre Berkman uh, um, included at the time um, a letter, yes, that one, a letter of uh, the King Palace of, um, in, in Belgium, Le Château de Laken. It's uh, dated from uh, 43. And in fact, it was written by the Vicomte du Parc, uh, who was the head of the um, diplomatic uh, relationship uh, at the time uh, outside the, the, the palace. And it's a letter of the palace thanking Alexandre Berkman because at the time he sent one copy of the book uh, to the palace and to the future king of uh, Belgium, uh, Roi Baudouin, who was a kid at the time. And so, um, in fact, and that book is really a piece of history. It's it's unique, uh, unique sorry. Uh, it's one not one of the six hundred copies. Uh, it's the uh, zero zero letter bounded um, with uh, the drawings, with the cover, with the letter of uh, the King Palace. Everything is there. Um, so um, one of my favorite pieces <laughs> in the auction. Yeah. even if I'm not that uh, uh, a huge fan of uh, RG, but that's for any RG fan, it's a must have. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Just to be clear, the, um, he became good friends with uh, this author, Alexander Berkman, and to the point where they were good friends, but he was also a maritime expert and he would be her, her advisor in all things maritime. And this is the personal copy of the book that they published and Hergé presented to him. So he, he gave it to him as a leather bound. He did original drawings. He did, uh, he has a correspondence and everything else in the book. And there was only 600 copies of the book published. This is in the early forties. Uh, and that's why this book is number. Every book is numbered. And this is zero zero because it was the presentation copy to him. So you could imagine this is a, it's a big deal to people in Belgium, especially. Of course. And, uh, never well, uh, uh, around the world, but yeah. in, in Belgium, uh, especially. And, yeah. and believe me, the foundation is looking at that one as well, because they, 
contacted me uh, several times uh, these last days. Um, yeah, it, it's not one of the, let's say, thousands of uh, books uh, printed at the time with uh, just a sketch, a quick a sketch or uh, just uh, uh, to uh, Bill or to Olivier or to Joe. No, that's 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 a piece of history. Uh, uh, so I'm 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 very happy that uh, um, we are able to offer that to uh, heritage uh, clients. Well, very unique item. I'm sure it's going to do pretty well. Uh, uh, there you go. Piece by Wanho. This is uh, this is gorgeous. Absolutely. Also a master of uh, colors. And uh, if you are um, uh, used uh, to uh, his universe, um, these pages are, are not coming on the market. It's impossible to get them. In fact, Juan Ho is one of the most successful artists uh, on the market. And only by uh, selling his books, uh, he doesn't need to, to, to sell his originals. So, he only sells uh, them time to time when he's exhibiting a book like he did uh, end of last year uh, in Paris. And it was, um, it was such a success that after five minutes, uh, he told uh, Bernard, Bernard is uh, representing him, to stop the, the selling because he um, Almost everything was sold in in a few minutes, and these, he only these... authorized the sale of eight. P so it was a beautiful gallery show, two different floors, and uh, uh, and Olivia and I were there with Nadia at the same time, and so we were at the uh, opening, and um, he only authorized to begin with eight pieces to be sold with a minimum price of twenty thousand dollars, yes, and within. The first five minutes, the, uh, all of them sold immediately, and they stopped the sale uh, after that, and and they sold for more than that. So uh, there just aren't any on the market. This came directly. This came from him, right? From Bernard uh, as a favor to us. Absolutely, yes, yeah. completely. And yeah. and and Black yeah. is also who... very famous in in America because Dark Horse uh, Comics. Uh, Published uh, that on on the American territory. So, exactly. Uh, mm. it's, it's he won it's, three Eisner awards and was nominated for two additional. And he worked as a Disney animator from 1993 to 2000. He's really great with uh, anthropomorphic uh, animals, and uh, you know he's very expressive. So uh, he, you know he he did the the Black Sad series. Uh, and it's it's incredibly popular in in Europe as well as here. So mm -hmm. you just can't get his work. He does a he does a, a minor sketch, and he gets you know he gets, they go for three thousand dollars. It's uh, it's amazing. Yeah, we had him to out to Big Wow one year, and yeah, he didn't bring any originals. He did he did some sketching while he was there, but I was hoping I'd actually get to see some originals, and uh, no, didn't didn't bring any with him, but. Uh, but yeah, a very interesting man, though. I uh, yeah, well, um, and and also a gentleman, and, uh, and yes, like I said, he has most of the originally produced uh, are still in his uh, private collection. So these are not coming on, on the market. And this one is uh, nearly at the closing of the Amarillo uh, book, uh, and it's the most dramatical uh, page of the story when where. Uh, one of the um, uh, secondary uh, character is is dying, uh, and um, yeah, that's that's a very uh, key page uh, of uh, Amarillo's story. Also published in uh, on um, um, in in America. Mm. Uh, let's see here, uh, a Kent Williams piece. Oh, uh, yeah. I've seen this piece before. It's very beautiful. I mean, I've, uh, I've I can't say I've seen it in person, but Kent Williams is somebody whose style I've always kind of gravitated to. I mean, it's wonderful seeing a, a fine art style within our 
comics medium, right? And Ken Williams. Uh, uh, absolutely. It's, it's, uh, Ken Williams did not a, a lot of these superheroes, uh, uh, visuals. So to have his style on, on the comics, uh, that's completely amazing. And it works there perfectly. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I really like the composition, uh, Electra being, uh, thrown in, in the darker side uh Daredevil in in the lighter uh, side of the original so yin yang uh love eight um I, I really like uh everything about that one and I'm a huge huge uh, Daredevil fan so yeah <laughs> I was uh um very fortunate to, to to have that one in in the in the auction and uh also Kent Williams a huge, huge uh, crowd uh, of followers in, in Europe, but also, of course, in America. Mm -hmm. So that 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 originals can can uh, work in uh, either uh, either market, in fact, either in in, in Europe or in uh, in America. So I really like. That. I mean, Ken Williams is known for his uh, you know his work on Epic and the Hellblazer and working with Neil Gaiman and Darren Ar Aronofsky. I mean, everybody admires him, appreciates him as, as a fine artist. And uh, his work is beautiful. This is oil, you know, it's an oil painting done in 1991. Uh, so it's a pretty unique image. And I, I believe, if I'm not wrong, that it served as a, a poster or something like that uh, as well. Uh, I have to check, but uh, I believe so. Yeah, so. that it was a, a, a promotional poster in 19. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Well, it's at, uh, just a little over 5,000 right now, but yeah, it's going to do, do better than that. And then uh, you mentioned this cover earlier. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, this. Well, yeah, the, yeah. to, to, to be so, honest, the, this, this one was supposed to be the, the cover of the catalog, <laughs> um, but I, I opted for a, for a ROM uh, to, to, to give uh, some, some highlights and to, to render some justice to uh, um, a character, in fact, who, who was very special at the time. And if I'm not wrong, who was not... Um, at first a comic character, but a toy character made by Kenner at the time, mm -hmm. and then became uh, became um, a comic character, which is completely different. It's the opposite of uh, what you have uh, normally. And um, that cover is also very nice. And uh, you have, of course, the four fantastic, uh, but also the beloved or hated, beloved hated uh, Dr. Doom under uh, the dome and um yeah that's that's a great page and we also have the uh um uh, asset uh, coming with uh all the um, the title and all the um the overlay yeah mm -hmm. the, the the overlay thank you it's uh 3 3 a.m now <laughs> so i'm becoming yeah. and, and this was <laughs> did they reprint to... or did they do a different version i think this is from fantastic Four Sixteen. You know that that issue where the Doctor Doom comes up with a shrinking ray and absolutely, absolutely. And, uh, yeah. I believe uh, I took that in in the description. Wait, um, I'm not sure if I pinpoint that in the description. If I didn't, oh, a Fantastic Four number ten. Mm -hmm. You you can. Uh... Doctor Doom pretends to be Reed in order to deceive the Fantastic Four and shrink them. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Sh absolutely. Evil yeah. shrinking ray. Okay. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. So it's a painted version uh, of one of the classic FF covers. And one of the best of the series, even if it is uh, the number 27, I believe. 24. Uh, tw 24. Thank you. So. Um, that that cover uh, is amazing and believe me again the colors of the uh, picture that we took uh for the catalog do not render uh justice uh to uh to the deepness of uh, of the color uh, when you have in front of you uh, like the conan like the rum uh, it's just amazing they're popping in in your eyes uh, 
beautiful, beautiful images. Um, and, and again, very, very tough to, to, to get them. I was very fortunate uh, two years ago to, uh, to meet uh, probably the, um, the person who, who has most of them. Uh, so, um, um, yeah. I still think you did the, the right thing by putting Ram on the, uh, the cover. I mean, it's a great image. Obviously. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Again, the FF will be on another auction cover sometime in the next two or three years Rob absolutely absolutely <laughs> that's that's what uh popped in my in my head at the time i said mm, well let's give rum uh, some highlights he deserves so yeah oh man let's see we've got uh two more pieces to look at and uh <laughs> we got kevich marvel uh graphic novel daredevil page and uh these are always you know really nice to see another uh you know, I love everybody loves Bill's work, I think. So th this is uh, the right period for, you know, for his prime color work, I think, in comics. And yeah, this is this would be a nice page to own. And, and not only that, the composition of the page, uh, when when you see the page or he constru uh, constructed the, the, the page is just amazing. Uh, the uh, creation, the uh, there are not a lot of artists uh, who, who can do that. Um, so I, I really like that one. Uh, yeah. And again, Daredevil. So I'm not, again, not very neutral. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, I think Bill's at uh, Lake Como this year, too. So another, uh, yeah. Yeah. another artist represented that will be there. Como, Como will be uh, crowded uh, this year. I, I believe that they are already. Um, sold out or something like that um it would be, yeah, the uh, vips they, they stopped selling those uh a month or so ago i think mm. when is uh, the date of como uh, it's um the 18th 18th and 19th um yes yeah yeah the, or the of 19th of may of may, may. Yeah. It, yeah. it will be a very crowded uh, month because first weekend of may uh, you have the barcelona uh, barcelona comic-con then the week after is Basel Fantasy uh, Comic Con, and then the week after is uh, Como. So that's, yeah, and uh, you and I are doing the you you and I and Nadia are doing the show in Paris. The Paris Comic Con Absolutely. is coming back on, in uh, in at the end of uh, March. March. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So we're going to go to Paris earlier than we normally would. So uh, normally we'd stay and we'd go to Como, but I, I, I don't, I don't think I'd go back and forth. But we'll see. Just stay longer, Joe. <laughs> you, you don't have to tell me twice. I tell you. Right <laughs> uh, yes, that is so very true. We, we have our virtual. Yeah, you know, Marcus mentioned. You know, I have that virtual show. Our, ours is the reason I know the the dates for Como is because Morgan moved his uh, show a week back, which was the week that my show was always at virtual show. So I had to move. Uh, well, I didn't have to, but I, I didn't want to have our shows overlap. That wouldn't have been fair for I, either of us. So I moved my show a week earlier. So that's why, and mine's the eleventh and twelfth. So that's why it's it's ingrained in my yeah, brain. A when, lot of stuff going on all at the same time. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot. Of stuff going on. I just wrote down Basel Comic Con, and then I realized that's the weekend of my show. So there's, you know, I'm trying to think about how I can work my way out there, but I can't. I, I literally can't leave until the day after our virtual show. So I can't leave until the, uh, you know, the, uh, that Monday. So yeah. I'm out of luck. And a, a good reason for you to come in Europe would be to to do uh, one of your uh, what you did in Orlando, but in Europe. Um, with all, a, you know, the, you all, 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 all your, your clients uh, that you have on CAF uh, from uh, Europe and, and the sellers in, in Europe. And of course, uh, all the classics like Albert, like uh, Mike uh, come in Europe. That, that could be an amazing event in, in Europe. Oh, uh, yeah. We have, a, we have a shout out to Albert. Underwent a little bit of surgery again on uh, this past uh, week. So uh, well there. wishes to him. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he he's he's going to come to OAX next year. If anybody had uh, FOMO about our show, it was it was Albert because that was the same weekend as Angulam, and he he really wanted to do uh, our show. 
but he already he already told me that uh, he's coming to our show next year. But we we had moved it too, so it's not this. It'll be the weekend before Angoulême, so he can still do both. But uh, it, uh, it would be a better yeah. choice. And Angoulême is not really Angoulême is a great convention, but it's not really a convention for uh, original art. Uh, yeah, it's more it's more like a book show. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, he says that you know, you know, because he gets him there, he, he says he does good business because he's one of the few art dealers there and he has enough clientele uh, around there that it makes it a good, you know, a good show for him. Yeah. But uh, uh, Albert yeah. enjoys being in, in Paris. Let me tell I'm you. sure he does. Well, I know Albert's wife enjoys being in, in oh, Paris. Oh, yeah. We've been there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's, uh, yeah. Especially his wife. <laughs> well, that's Believe me. <laughs> By the way, I I, uh, I I had lunch with Scott Wingo, and then I met with uh, Dino this past weekend. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, I, I should give them a shout out. So there it is. So Were there they, we uh, have um, a, an amazing page from the Incal story. So we had one from the Airtight, uh, which was in in the seventies. Then we um, we we moved there in the Incal. Um, uh, storyline. Uh, I talked about the Incal linked with the uh, Meta Baron. Um, so the Incal is about um, the Incal light, which is a um, pyramid made of light with uh, special powers giving to uh, John DeFool, is uh, the, the character that you see uh, on, on the top uh, panel with the uh, seagull. And uh, is hunted by a different faction of the uh, galaxy uh, to to get back uh, the the Incal. And on that page is uh, chased by the Techno Techno, um, and uh, that's that's an amazing page. Uh, I really like that page. And uh, if you see the inking and and lines of uh, Mobius at that time, which is a little bit later, it's more thin. It's completely different of what we we see uh in um in the uh airtight uh, garage uh, um, and and the movie is coming up uh, as well 24 or 25 uh, so that's a great moment to 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 have a page from uh, from the, that uh, series as well and that one is a, a key page yeah yeah, it was in this storyline cool. that it was in this series that the meta barons were introduced and then there was uh, absolutely, the absolutely. you had the spin-off uh that that you saw that that created the whole meta baron series so this is a you know very very popular uh series uh one of his two or three most popular uh, things he, he did and in Europe, this is revered. I, I went to an exhibit and it's just, it was amazing. The attendance for the Mobius exhibit, it was unbelievable. Well, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, I know, I know a lot of European collectors who, uh, you know, Mobius is one of their focuses. So, yeah. and, and believe me, you as one, uh, uh yeah. as well, sorry. Uh, and in this auction, we also have very special uh, on, on Mobius. We have a Star Watcher uh, Bible, uh, which the, it's the, the, the only one um, in um, existing. You can compare um, um, the Bible to the uh, Dune uh, Bible made by Jodorowsky and, and Mobius mm -hmm. at the time to promote uh, uh, the Dune project in, in Hollywood and um, in the early 90s, um, after the success of the Star Watcher in the comics, uh, Mobius uh, wanted to do some kind of movie anime uh, with a video system and Alain Guillaume. And um, well, in 92, uh, it was uh, stopped because Alain Guillaume uh, killed himself in a car crash. So um, project was stopped, but uh, previously the other uh, art visual director, uh, Sylvain Després, uh, very famous uh, director, made a copy uh, with the uh, authorization of um, Alain Guillaume and Mobius 
to uh, keep a trace of uh, the, the the wool thing and we have the um the the wool book it weighs over uh, five pounds <laughs> Uh, 432 pages uh, with uh, the complete uh, layout uh, design of the, the characters and, and the complete storyboard. So that's, that's amazing. That's uh, unique, in fact. Uh, and uh, seen uh, for, in fact, that book was kept uh, in, in, in a library for uh, all these years and uh, it came up it popped uh, a month, two months ago, and uh, no one uh, was aware of uh, the existence. And uh, Mobius signed that that book, uh, authenticated the book in '96 when he was in uh, Los Angeles. So that's also a great uh, piece of history uh, to get during that uh, auction. Well, I'm excited to see the uh, a lot of the results from this auction. You know. Uh like probably many people in the chat uh, yeah, i'm going to be watching it all weekend to see uh to see where things wind up i mean there's there's a lot of good stuff there and i'm glad and i hate that, that we kept you even later than i thought olivier but we <laughs> that this really was educational i think on, on many many fronts my pleasure but, and let, let, let's do that each time and uh and uh, uh with joe that's that's always a pleasure thank you joe <laughs> my pleasure uh, thank you thank Thank you, Bill. Thank you and for joining I'm, us. I'm, I'm not on myself. Because I would have had to stumble through this myself. Bill wasn't <laughs> going to let me off the hook. <laughs> yeah, no, no, this is good. I, I like the color, too. You're, you're a good contrast to the, you know, I've got a little purple thing going back there, and, and Joe's all blue, and you've got the orange. I mean, we, we work really well together color 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 wise with this show but um well, but yeah thank I, you so much I, for I'll, I'll try to to get the same room uh, for the next time. <laughs> okay. And if, uh, <laughs> If I do make it out to, to Europe at all in this in 2024, I'll be sure to let you know what my schedule is. Hopefully, we can please, work something please, out. Please, I would love please, please. To, to and if, if you can combine uh, your uh, coming in, in Europe when uh, Joe and Nadia are there, that will be uh, even better. All better. So uh, yeah. okay, I'm you'll have some nice dinners. Soon. I can promise you that. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, lacking uh, food or drink. Please remember of uh, the idea of doing something uh, CAF event in, in Europe because mm -hmm. uh, we talked a lot about it. Uh, a lot of people, of course, uh, cannot travel uh, in, in America or every two months. So uh, I, I know that a lot of collectors were uh, kind of uh, frustrated because all the good, good stuff always happened in America. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Almost, uh, except speed. for the international auction, of course. But uh, right. um, so uh, please, please. Uh, well, we uh, tried, you know, part of the reason putting it in Orlando was Orlando is actually, uh, you know, it's an affordable place to fly to from Europe. Or, uh, you absolutely. know, it, it, yeah. so, it's, so now that I think we have a precedent, precedent set, at least, uh, people know what to expect and you know maybe maybe that flight uh you know is easier to stomach you know and maybe you make a, a vacation out of it that was the other idea right if, if someone from europe or out overseas was coming to the show at least there was something to do after the show they could bring their spouse with them uh but but potentially you know yeah, I, i'll never say never i mean but next year definitely you know the orlando show is our next one but um but but for me i you know, there are so many uh, European collectors and clients that I, I've worked with over the years. I, I feel like I have to go to Europe w with an art focus of, my, of a trip just so I can meet with mm -hmm. so many of those people that I might not have the opportunity to otherwise. So it's always been on my mind. And that's uh, so, you know, maybe it'll happen this year. But if it, if it certainly doesn't happen this year, it's got to happen soon because fantastic. We're, we're, not, we're all not getting any younger. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me. Uh, <laughs> uh but no but thank you both for doing this this is a, this is a lot of fun and uh it's unfortunately we only get to do these twice a year but um you know we'll uh we'll, we'll definitely be doing it again but i'll, I'll keep you both the rest of my schedule and uh you know coming up and um yeah and if there's ever anything um i don't know you know one of the things i'll just bring this up with both of you you know i mean you guys don't really ever uh do too many uh like call for consignments that i that i get that i would be putting out there that that would be something that i would publish for you you know i'd be happy to do that so especially if you know when uh, when those periods are out there i'd be happy to do that because i don't think that's normal pr that at least i get from heritage joe you know I, I get a lot of you know the show promotion stuff but i don't think when it's time for consignments that there's really any kind of you mean solicit consignments yeah 
you know, like, uh, you know, well, you, yeah, I know I you mean, don't listen, there's, but it's very different than it used to be with five major sales a mm -hmm. year and 52 weeklies. Yeah. Uh, we're always in the, you know, accepting conssignments. Right. Uh, the I'm, deadline so is too busy. You don't need my help. <laughs> it's well, the it's not that. It's just that, uh, you know, I, I, I would need your help at the deadline so that your uh, Letting you people know, know clients here knows they, when it's, yeah. when it's, it, you know, even though we have that many, it's amazing how many people will wait till the last second and, and, you know, they, they just need a deadline in order to get something yeah. done. So, um, yeah, I'll, well, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. that when I do the review of uh, the April sale, you know. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, I All appreciate right, well, that. Uh, That's a good thought. Pleasant dreams, Olivia. So, uh, yeah, I look forward to chatting you. with you again. Um, you know, best of uh, best of luck with the with the event this weekend. It's going to be a lot of fun. I know a lot of uh, our fans are going to be watching the auction results. So, so thank you both, and uh, have a wonderful evening. Thank, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Bye bye.